Hi, I'm Margaret Mitchell. I'm a researcher at Google, um, and I'll be talking about some things I've learned uh, developing machine learning models um, throughout my career. So we often like to conceptualize and think of a machine learning pipeline as containing four basic uh, steps where training data are collected, a model is trained, media um, can then be put through some post-processing step, and then people will see the output. Um, but before we even begin the process, the data itself encodes a subset of human perspectives, right? So when people choose to talk about things, um, that is their skew towards what to talk about. Um, data is not a snapshot of everything and all experiences for all of humanity. It's a very limited subset uh, with all kinds of skews reflecting the way uh, people represent themselves in that data. Uh, so the bias has a ripple effect throughout the rest of model development as the data for training itself is by definition the only information that a model can learn from. Um, and that's not even addressing the human decisions in what data to collect and how it is annotated, which further injects uh, human decisions and human skews. More kinds of biases are then injected into model development by the choice of model, the choice of objective function, uh, how the model is evaluated, um, and the choices therefore like persist in the rest of the model life cycle. Human biases are further injected into any post-processing decisions or a lack of post-processing. Uh, and finally, once a model is deployed, uh, people see the output and begin to act on that output. But as people act on the output, they are themselves creating more data based on that limited subset of data that is now made available from the model. So this then creates uh, an echo chamber or feedback loop where the model then learns uh, on the human data that has already encoded the biases in the first model decisions. So this can amplify problematic decisions over time. Um, and I like to call this bias laundering. So one of the main ideas of this talk um, and in model development generally um, to keep in mind is that data set, the choice of data set defines what we care about for the model. The default approach to handling representation and data is to simply use the training data that's available in a specific data set, uh, evaluate on the evaluation data that's available, often with very similar distributions to the training data set. Um, and this carries with it the value judgment that the representation of individuals in the data set is the representation that should be there for the goals of the model. So if critical aspects of the problem space are not represented in the data, then using the data out of the box means you are making the value judgment that these aspects should not be represented. Uh, for example, if a population is over or underrepresented in the data and that leads to the selection of a model that performs worse um, on a possibly different subpopulation, then the implicit value judgment is that the model should perform worse on that subpopulation. If the data and training creates models that disproportionately under, underperform on some populations, uh, then you're making the value judgment that some populations should receive worse performance. So one of the most important and simplest things we can do in this space is to think about the benefits and risks for different model errors in context. So, uh, for example, in classification systems, we can think about the error space following this basic breakdown of a confusion matrix where things either exist or they don't, a model predicts they exist or they don't, um, it can get these things right or it can get these things wrong. Uh, so something exists and it's not predicted is a false negative. Something doesn't exist uh, and is predicted is a false positive. Uh, and these metrics are uh, not all created equal, right? So um, in some cases, a false negative can be much more problematic given the foreseeable use of the model in contexts. So for example, privacy in images, a false negative can lead to uh, something not being blurred, which could lead to something like identity theft. False negatives might be better than false positives in something like spam filtering, uh, where if you get a job offer or uh, a letter from a loved one um, and this is filtered out as spam, uh, you can miss something really important. Um, 
But note here that the usage and context really matters. So if foreseeable users include those that are easily scammed, leading to a loss of wealth, uh, then false negatives have greater risk and model development needs to balance the different populations in determining the optimal models. Um, so one of the themes here, uh, when we think about the ethical development of models, one of the most critical components is foresight. Who are the intended users and who are the foreseeable users? What are the model goals and what are the foreseeable harms from different model errors, right? Whatever you do results in an, in an output, right? Um, so I'm just an engineer, it doesn't quite fly. It doesn't actually mean anything other than that you're intentionally being ignorant about these different kinds of errors that you are creating in model development. Um, so I wanna bring in a case study. Um, I was able to work on a coronavirus forecasting model um, and there were all sorts of decisions we had to make there. So first off, what to predict, cases, deaths, et cetera, um, how to measure the quality of imperfect predictions uh, using things like what time span should we be using in a forecast, uh, A to forecast and B to uh, measure errors, um, how to group populations in the predictions uh, such as county level, uh, state level, things like that. Um, and also whether or not to model the effect of interventions uh, or the effect of the forecast itself on changing uh, the behavior of the virus. So common metrics in forecasting uh, and in machine learning more broadly include things like mean absolute error, mean squared error, uh, and then variations thereof. Uh, but notice here that these are all absolute values, right? So under prediction and over prediction aren't distinguished as part of model training. Um, so this is, uh, uh, th these are metrics that correspond to things like L1 loss or L2 loss. But what this misses is that drastically different effects of over predicting cases and under predicting cases are at play. So if there are false positives for case counts and the prediction is that there will be more, more cases than there are, then the organizations and people using the forecast will be overprepared. But a false negative uh, in underpredicting case counts can create situations where there are less resources than necessary and ultimately something like more death, right? So although both errors have pros and cons, false negatives are a foreseeable worse harm than false positives. Um, so one of the punchlines here is that the I'm just an engineer approach inflicts foreseeable harm. This intentional ignorance is your value-laden choice. The goal in ethical uh, model development is to make explicit the value-laden and normative decisions encoded uh, in development with respect to the system usage in context. Um, Development uh, considerations include the choices of data, the model, the objective, how to evaluate. Um, and usage, the considerations include the outcomes that the model may contribute to, including misuse and malicious use, um, with all kinds of different considerations, such as foreseeable harms, foreseeable discriminatory uses, um, and all the other uh, reasonable uh, side effects or direct effects of different model decisions. Okay, thank you.